Hello, it's Dawn Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today we'll be taking a look at the rest of the decks that have been hanging out in my purgatory box. In the second video, we'll be taking a look at the decks that I just really haven't resonated with for one reason or another. We'll be talking about all those reasons as we go through each of the decks. But before we jump in, the usual quick disclaimer. We are going to be taking a look at some decks that are no longer working for me, but it's important to know that this is in no way meant to be disrespectful to the deck, the creator, the publisher, or anyone who has any connection to the deck. Each of these decks are valuable in their own unique way, but in full transparency, I will be honest about my experiences working with them. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the decks that might need to find a new home. So the first deck that we are going to be talking about today is the new chapter tarot. And this is, this is a really cool deck. I do have to say this box thing, uh, it's cool, but it annoys me. Like in actual using it, it annoys me. <laughs> I'll just be honest. Um, I don't like this cardboardy thing. I, I really wish this creator would either make the, the um, guidebook fit the cards or the cards fit the box, like one way or the other. Although I do have to say, I do quite like the size of the cards. But here's the thing why this deck is is in my purgatory box because it's really cool and there are so many things about this deck that I'm like, yeah, I get it. I'm right there with you. I'm on board. It's a little bit thothy. It's elemental. It's numerological. Um, that card is a little hard. <laughs> and I do think it is like a super cool deck and I have done some very preliminary work with it like this queen of discs is awesome the artwork is beautiful and the deck is awesome but here's the thing every time I get this deck out to work with it I get it out and it's I'm gonna be honest it's the cardstock here's the thing about cardstock I I'm not I don't really consider myself a cardstock snob all I really want is a deck that I can shuffle like at the end of the day that is the only criteria for me when it comes to cardstock I just need to be able to shuffle it so a deck like this where actually the the feel of the cards is nice like it's not it's what I would kind of consider like um, satiny a little bit. It's not glossy and it's not matte, so it's not like super sticky, although it does stick a little bit. Um, it is pretty chunky, so it's kind of thick. And here's the thing. It's really difficult for me to shuffle. It has no bend. Can you see that? Like none. There's no bend there. And so trying to shuffle it is, as you can see, a challenge. And I've, I've talked about this before. I'm sorry, cardstock is important to me because this is a tool. And if I can't work with it, then it's no good to me as a tool. Does that make sense? It's not about so much the, um, the look of it or, or the feel of it, which, you know, it is nice too. But for me, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing for me is can I work with it in a way that makes sense to me? And I can't riffle shuffle this deck. And as you see, it doesn't even overhand shuffle really well because it's it does like clump up in huge chunks. So I'm not getting a good shuffle. And for me, shuffling is part of my whole tarot reading process. Shuffling for me is how I transition from whatever else is going on in my world to focusing in on what it is I'm trying to do with this deck. Here's the deal. I have a pretty large collection. Even with what I've rehomed, I still have over 200 decks. So I can be super picky. And the thing with this deck is, I mean, the artwork is so beautiful. But the thing with this deck is every time I get it out and I go to work with it, I'm back to, I can't shuffle it. Anyway, the new chapter tarot, just as, as beautiful as this is, as smart as this deck is, the fact that I can't physically work with it makes me not want to, and I always pass it over for something else. Okay, let's let's continue our cardstock conversation because I have quite a few decks in this collection that are cardstock issues for me. And this is probably the most disappointing one for me. This is the Pagan Otherworlds, which is an absolutely stunning, stunning deck. 
But you guys, I never use it. And you know why? Because every time I get this deck out, and I talked about this in, I think it was Sylvain's Seven Deadly Sins. It was like the deck you were mad at. I'm always mad at this deck when I get it out because it's large. And as you can see, it's slippery. And I know a lot of people love this cardstock. And I've even got a section of cards over there. But I... I cannot work with this deck. I don't know what it is. I If I'm just like completely uncoordinated, which is totally possible. This could totally be a me thing, but I have to work really hard to keep a hold of this deck. I, this one breaks my heart a little bit, I gotta tell ya. But the fact of the matter is that every time I go to pull this deck out, I just end up putting it back away because I it ends up flying all over my table. I guess I'm super uncoordinated. Like, don't get me wrong. This deck is like one of the decks, this and like Baba Studio decks, there's like the standard by which people judge their cardstock, right? This is considered premier cardstock. This is a premier deck and I can't keep it in my hands. So it's a total me problem. There's nothing wrong with this deck. It's beautiful. And I love it aesthetically, but I can't hold on to it and I can't shuffle it very easily. And then we're back to the whole interrupting my, my work with it. And then I just don't, I just don't want to, I don't want to. So that's, that's where I'm at with that one. I will be honest, like the new chapter, I know it's going, I'm done with that deck. I'm done trying to fight with it. This one, I'm still like, I don't know if I can part with it yet, but it has not been on my table as a working deck for probably close to two years now so that that should tell me something but anyway that's the pagan other worlds okay continuing with cardstock this is the textured tarot and i absolutely adore this deck i adore the backs I wish, I, I get that this cardstock is, um, I do believe it's like super eco-friendly and all of that good stuff, which is wonderful, but it is cardboard. It's not cardstock. It is straight up cardboard. There is zero bend. I mean, you think the new chapter is bad. This, this has nothing. There's no bend to this deck. Um, and I get that it's, you know, it's, super eco-friendly which is fantastic but I do have other decks that are super eco-friendly that are on shuffleable cardstock and so we're back to I can't work with it in that way I can't shuffle it you certainly cannot riffle shuffle this deck if you try you will bend the cards but I love the artwork in this deck it's obviously collage I think it's smart I love all the textures again obviously textured tarot the textiles the layers in this deck it's beautiful I really enjoy it um, but again we're back to I can't work with it and in, in terms of shuffling and this is another one like the pagan other worlds where I'm really like I'm not sure I, it breaks my heart a little bit that I can't really use it and I'm just kind of like still, I'm still back and forth on this one to be perfectly honest. Wow, we're still on cardstock. Let me just be honest. I mean, I guess I'm taking a while here, but we're still on cardstock. And this is the Afluorescent Tarot, which is out of print, very difficult to find, especially the colored edition. And I have trimmed mine. And here's the thing with this deck, it's on plastic cardstock like straight up plastic cardstock, which I know some people absolutely love. I can't stand. I do not like the textile feel of plastic in my hands. I mean, this would be great. Like if you want to take it around because it's plastic, you can wipe it off. Like it's it's really versatile in that sense. It's super dur durable. It was a pain in the butt to modify. I did do a video, a mod with me on this deck. And honestly, I've used this deck a lot. Like I used it a lot to uh, work through, um, not work through, but really to, to tap into um, what's going on on the inner emotional landscape. This deck is amazing for that. But I have other decks that do that just as well. And I almost always will go to them instead. That's the Efflorescent Tarot. And I'm pretty sure this one is going and I'm pretty sure I know where it's going. Um... So I, and, and I feel really good about that because this one, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm 
gifting to a friend and I'm, I'm real happy about that decision because I know she will appreciate it. So let's move on to a couple of decks that have sort of their own system to it. Now this is a, the fifth tarot and I'll be perfectly honest, this is kind of a cardstock thing too. However, I did see that this deck, it's an indie, uh, indie deck, um, does have, I am pretty sure I saw this on the creator's website that they have it in a matte cardstock because again, this is like, um, this is just like laminated paper, right? Um, but that's not really my issue with this deck. It's flexible and it's thin so I can shuffle it so I don't really have a problem with the cardstock. Um, however, if I was going to keep this deck, I might trade for or um, purchase the matte version and then, you know, rehome this one. But the big issue with this deck, as beautiful as it is, is it has a fifth suit which on one hand is really cool and I really like the art style in this deck um, and I, I really do like the uh, way the suits are broken down into elements. So here we have the three of fire for spontaneity. Um, here's the seven of fire for activation. So the extra suit is of lotuses and this connects to, um, if I remember correctly in the book, although it's been several years since I've read the book, however, it does have a big chunky guide book and I have read it cover to cover love this imagery um anyway it has it has a fifth suit and this suit connects to the uh spirit and for me that's a little bit challenging because that's kind of how i've always related to the major arcana and so i'm a little bit unsure how to navigate a deck with five suits because then that changes my perspective of the major arcana and the only reason this deck has kind of been in my purgatory uh, box for a while now is because I'm just not sure that I have the time or the energy to learn another new thing, right? And here's the thing with this deck. It's been in my I'm going to work with box for about four years. No lie. <laughs> about four years I have been hanging on to this deck trying to make time to work with it, to learn it. Um, I have read the guidebook, so I've already done that, but it's like, I just never seem to pull it out when it comes time to work with something new, to try something new. Speaking of decks that I have set aside because I was going to learn, um, this is the Tarot of Spirit, and I do have the big book that goes with this. And I bought this deck because I thought it would be a really great transition deck um, but to, to learning Thoth, right? To kind of this, because it is a bit Thothy, um, and I thought it might help me kind of transition into, into working with the Thoth. That was why I bought it, right? That was the, the plan, the thinking. I bought the big book, and... I've never done it and now I'm just full on into the thought. So now this kind of feels like I, I, I passed it over, right? I'm, I'm already moved beyond this in a sense. Not that I couldn't work with this deck, right? I could totally pull this deck out and work with it because it is beautiful in its own, in its own right. It's, it's an absolutely stunning, stunningly illustrated deck. And so I don't know where this deck sits in my in my practice and in my collection anymore. And it's not been one that I've been like, oh, I can't wait to get that out and work with. Um, obviously because it's been sitting in its box for years. And that's always a good tell for me. If it's in a tuck box and I haven't made a bag for it yet, that's a good indication that I'm not, I'm not really that excited to work with it. Let's talk about a couple of decks that have like kind of specific issues that kind of, I wouldn't say bother me, but keep me from really wanting to work with the deck too terribly much. This is the Universal Folk Oracle, and I have worked with this deck. Um, I was actually really excited when, like, I this is one I legit pre-ordered from U.S. Games. Like, I didn't even wait for it to hit Amazon or anything. I pre-ordered it. Um, it was actually during the pandemic, so it took a really long time to be produced and, and get to me. But I love the color palette love the color palette and I have paired this deck with the Hush Tarot which is pretty cool and I have paired this deck with the Wandering Star which is pretty cool. 
But the thing is, is this deck, as charming as the artwork is, is it's all made in. So if you read in the guidebook, um, and you can tell by looking at the figures, they're all young, like super young. And it's that maiden energy, which is cool. Like that's, that's good. Um, I was kind of hoping that maybe they would announce some sort of follow up with like a, maybe a mother and a crone version. Um, and if that were the case, I, I might be tempted to kind of collect all three, but I haven't seen or heard anything about that. Um, but in the guidebook, it is very, it does very specifically talk about maiden energy. And I feel like the majority of my tarot decks, because they all feature young people, and the majority of my oracle decks, because they all feature young people, already tap into that maiden energy a lot, like a lot. I have very few decks that I feel occupy the mother space and very few decks that I feel occupy the crone space. Those are very special to me in my collection because that's such a rare thing to find these days. Um, most of the time decks depict really, really young people. People that honestly look younger than my kids. And that for me is again, a very me thing. But I just don't know that I need another deck full of maiden energy and, and particularly an oracle deck because all of the keywords are all keywords I can find in other oracle decks that I have. And I've only found two decks, two tarot decks that I really wanna pair this with. And even that's sometimes a little like, mm, you know, they work, they work, but is it really what I wanna pair that tarot deck with? In that sense, it's almost too similar. And as you can probably tell if you've watched some of my pairings, I often like to have my Oracle deck be kind of a, a counterbalance to my tarot. So if I have a really uh, busy art tarot deck like, like this, featuring this kind of artwork, I tend to want to pair it with a more minimalistic Oracle because it balances out the energy for me. So if I'm going to use a really busy Oracle deck like this with very heavily illustrated cards, I tend to go for a more minimalistic tarot deck. And I just haven't found that I've had that draw with this particular deck. And I don't really have a draw to use it on its own either because again, um, they're very young and it's, I mean, it's charming, it's charming. But again, it's its full of that maiden energy that I already feel like I have an, an overflow of or in a sense, an excess of in my collection. And I'm trying to kind of weed some of that out and replace it with um, other other types of energy so that I can kind of balance my collection out a little bit more. So that's that's my my deal with this one. Um, I do enjoy it. I think it's absolutely charming artwork. It has one of my favorite backs, but like for real, I can't keep a deck just because I like the backs. That's just silly. I have edged it in this kind of purple color um, to match the backs and it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful deck, but I just find that it that um, energetically, it's too similar to a lot of other things I already have. So I think I'm pretty good with letting this one go. I think I'm on board with that. So now we're moving on to the Ostara Tarot. And this, this deck, y'all, <laughs> this deck has so many issues for me. I keep hanging on to this one because there's like a story with this deck. Um, it was my deck, then it became my youngest deck. It's super glossy, as you can tell, it's gonna keep hitting the light. Um, it's that terrible old Schiffer cardstock. Um, I don't like new Schiffer cardstock either, but that's neither here nor there. Um, it was gilded. I took the gilding off. I edged it. Um, I did I did a whole thing with it. It started off as my deck when it was first released mass market because I do believe this was an indie deck prior to that. And I was like, oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Like, oh, seriously, so pretty but it is a deck that is done by four different artists and I just find that it's too disjointed for me. And I, I know that I've heard other people say this as well. Also, some of the figures, again, we're back to really, really young. Really young, got that maiden energy going on, right? And some of the cards I just don't get. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest. I'm like, like this, what is going on here? I mean, I get it, but like, I, I don't like it. Um, and some of them I like, I really, really like, but I feel like the, the four different artists thing is just a little too disjointed for me. I don't often like decks with um, multiple artists and they, they don't stay in my collection very long because that's usually, um, that's usually a deal breaker for me. I'll be perfectly honest. I don't know why some of them are upside down, but I keep hanging on to this deck because 
Uh, again, there's one particular card and I've shown it before and I'll probably show it again if it comes up here. There is one particular card that I think is just absolutely fantastic. Um, like, and I, I, I love some of the cards, um, but then some of them I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> that, that art style doesn't work for me. And that's the problem is there's a shift in the art style because it's done by different artists and I'm just not fond of that. But oh my goodness, look at this queen. And oh my goodness, look at this queen. And like, there are several cards. I think this might be like these beautiful, like half, half of the deck I like and half of the deck I don't. And that's a pretty, pretty big distinction, right? Like, I don't like these ones. They're, they feel a little bit like geometric and then they don't feel like they match like the, the subtle, beautiful energy of these cards. And I don't know who, which artist depicted, depicted what, and I'm not trying to diss any particular artist. Um, it's just for me, it doesn't work. Like, I feel like I would like a deck by each of these artists individually, but not all together, if that makes sense. There's my favorite card and my second favorite cards behind it. I absolutely adore this Ten of Swords. I've talked about it many times before. The The swords are um, just these little white things, kind of like barnacles on the whale. And when a whale breaches it, you know, part of that is knocking off the barnacles and, you know, kind of cleaning them off. And when this whale splashes back into the water, all those swords are going to be released and it's going to move on with its life, move on with its journey. And I love that. I also really love this Two of Swords. But I hate this cardstock, and I don't like the disjointed feel of the different um, art styles. So that's where I'm at with it. And the only reason I, I've kept hanging on to it, because as I started to say at the beginning of this whole long ramble, is um, it was my deck. And then I was like, mm, doesn't work for me. So my youngest took it, and then then um, they got other decks that they liked better, and this just ended up in shoved in a drawer. So I took it back. And then I tried to work with it again, and I'm just like, yeah, it's just, it's too, it's just too disjointed for me, and I don't enjoy the cardstock and all of that kind of stuff. And at this point, I'm just holding on to it because of that passing back and forth between me and my youngest, but they don't care, so <laughs> I'm like, okay, maybe it's time for it to move on. So that is, that is the Ostara Tarot. Um, it also comes in a ridiculous box with like the two part box thing, which I threw away. So I just have a bag, but I'm pretty sure it's time for this one to go. Okay, so two two more decks. We have an Oracle and this is the only other Oracle deck on, on this list because um, Oracles I really don't stress about too much. I tend to be either like, yeah, it's in my collection or no, it's not. Um, and these decks are all like decks that I'm kind of like, I, hmm, do I want to keep it or not? This is the Wild Goddess um, Oracle and it's by uh, Zerner Farber, that, that team. And I, and I love it. It's doing a really weird bow thing. Like, it seriously rocks. I don't know what's up with that. But anyway, this deck is super cool. And I have the Creativity Oracle by this um, same uh, deck creator team. And I really enjoyed that one. And I did enjoy this one because here's the thing with this one. The messages are on the back. So when I was doing daily Oracle polls and incorporating the messages into my... Um, into my, my daily planner. This was awesome for that. I really, really enjoyed that, but that's a practice I've moved away from. And um, so I tried, which that's why I bought this deck was to do that with, and I did, and it was fun and I enjoyed it. Um, and then I tried to kind of use it as an Oracle and then I love this card, love it. Um, then I tried to use it as an Oracle and it doesn't really work as an Oracle for me because it's too archetypal. And that's not really how I work with my Oracle decks. It's not, um, you know, tapping into specific archetypes is not something that I regularly do in my practice. You know, it happens as part of a natural working with the tarot, but it's not something that like I, I work with a ton. I think this one just doesn't really work that well for me in terms of just being a regular Oracle. It was fine when I was using it for like a daily poll, but I'm not doing that anymore. So I think I'm ready for it to move on. And I do have, like I said, the creativity Oracle, which kind of fills that space for me too. Okay, the last deck, the Deviant Moon. <laughs> I just did, not too long ago, 
um, a whole bonding video with this deck, right? Because I got it and I was like this whole thing about, I don't get this deck. Why does everybody love this deck? I want to figure it out. So I bought it. And I'll leave a link for that in the description box below in case you've missed it. But I did work with this deck for a whole month. I made a whole video on my work with this deck. And the deck is cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I bought the big book and everything. The deck is really cool, but it's just not for me. Um, I do like this kind of cool little universe that Patrick Valenza has created here. Um, and I do have his new illustrated deck. I, I pre-ordered that. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work for me either. I'm kind of second guessing that purchase now at this point, but we'll see when it gets here. But as cool as this deck is, it's just, and I, and I did really enjoy my month with it. And I really enjoyed getting to know it and um, getting to know these characters in this world that Patrick Valenz has created. But it's just not a deck that I feel myself drawn to use. Um, because when it comes down to it, like I, I debated of where, where to put this deck it, within these videos, whether it should be in this one or it should be in the other one where I have other decks that fill fill this space. But as, as you've seen through most of this video, like I always have something else that will fill that space, right? Because I have a vast collection. So I have multiple decks that will fill the same space for me in a sense, like on a very basic level. And so if I want this weird kind of artwork, I'm going to go to my Madame Lydia's, which is a deck that I adore. If I want this kind of diving into the, the shadowy realm of things, I have other decks that I can use for that. Um, if I want the cheeky energy, I have other decks for that, right? Like the, the zombie tarot that I talked about. Um, so I have other decks that I do feel like I would I gravitate toward more for those particular issues um, or energies, I should say. But I do like I did really enjoy this this deck. I still really love this card. But again, we're back to I'm not going to keep a deck because I really love one card. Right. And it just is not a deck that I like think about and feel drawn to like, oh, I really want to get out my Deviant Moon and work with it, right? That hasn't happened again. And I only really picked it up out of sheer curiosity. And it was cool. It was a fun ex experiment and experience. But it's just not a deck that I really that resonates with me. Like I appreciate it. I understand what the attraction is to it. And I think it's a really cool, really wonderful, really smart deck, but it's just not one that, that resonates on a personal level for me. So yeah, so I think it can go to a new home. I have edged it and I do have the, the big book. So that'll, that'll be a whole thing. Yeah, the Deviant Moon, like it was a fun experience, but I don't think it's really ultimately meant to stay with me long term. So that was a look at the rest of the decks that I'm considering rehoming. If I do decide that it's time for them to go, I'll be listing them in my shop on my website. You can find a link for that in the description box below, as well as links where you can purchase these decks new if they are still available and in print. As always, my friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to sharing with you again soon.